Welcome to this online Easter service from St. Columba's Church in Ennis with the churches of Kilnosula and Christ Church Spanish Point. We know that others are joining us from around Ireland, the UK and elsewhere. This is very much your service as well. We are delighted that you are spending this time with us and we hope and pray that you and all your loved ones remain happy, safe and well. We are most certainly living through confusing and troubling times and so we are called to show love and concern for one another in these new and different ways. We follow the service of the word booklets that you can see on the website and download. You can also view or download and print the pew sheet for this Sunday which includes some suggested hymns on YouTube. The links have a choir and lyrics for you to sing along please feel free to pause this service from time to time if you'd like to include the hymns at some point. And so we start our service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! On this Easter Sunday, we celebrate we gather and together we say. One thing have I asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. What is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? We seek him with all our heart. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? We seek him with all our soul. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? We seek him with all our mind. Christ, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? We seek him with all our strength. Lord, have mercy. And so we say together, Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow and hold me. Christ below me, Christ above me. Christ beside me on my left and on my right. This day be within and around me, lowly and meek yet all-knowing, all-powerful. Christ is a light. Christ is a shield. Christ be with me on my left and on my right. And the collect for this Easter Sunday. Glorious Lord of life, by the mighty resurrection of your Son, you overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy Christ's rising from the dead, may be raised from the death of life to the life of righteousness, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him 
after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the reading. Now hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you've ever seen the film My Big Fat Greek Wedding. It's a story about a Greek-American girl called Tula from a very Greek family, a family that is very, very Greek. They have nothing but Greek relatives. They eat Greek food. They own a Greek restaurant called Dancing Zorba. The father of the family has an enormous Greek flag painted on his double garage doors. And give him a moment and he will tell you that any word you care to mention from any language around the world will have its origins in Greek. Tula is going through an early midlife crisis. At 30, having had her childhood, adolescence and adulthood plagued by bad luck, she feels that she is the only woman in her family who has, quotes, failed at being a typical Greek girl. Her family expects her to be more like her 33-year-old sister, Athena, and marry a Greek boy, make Greek babies, and feed everyone until the day she dies. And then, against all expectation, she falls in love. But not with a Greek boy, but with a tall, handsome, long-haired, Anglo-Saxon Protestant teacher called Ian. Hearing her family even trying to pronounce his name, Ian, is a trial in itself. Rather bravely, she decides that the time for Ian to meet the whole family is at an Easter party in the restaurant. Of course, a time when, as Greek Orthodox, they are at their most Greek. So Ian bravely joins in with the festivities, which includes holding a boiled egg and tapping another person's egg, saying, Christos Anesti, happy Easter, except that he has no time to practice the phrase, and so it comes out more like cheese toasts are nasty. Tula's father, Julie, taps Ian's egg back and, in Greek, mumbles, my ancestors were philosophers whilst yours were still swinging in trees. Tula, ever the peacemaker, says to Ian, oh, he likes you. From this difficult beginning, things only get worse as culture clash after culture clash pile up. But also, as time goes by, something slowly changes. 
Ian is willing to be baptised in the Orthodox Church to please Tula's family. And there is a point in the middle of a cold church with Ian, naked except for swimming trunks, slathered in the oil of chrism, knee-deep in water in a gaudy children's paddling pool, submitting to unintelligible prayers, where it becomes clear to Tula's family just how much he loves her, just how much he is prepared to do for her. And their own hearts begin to melt. By the end of the film, the couple marry in a riotous, noisy, exuberant, ouzo fueled bazooki-accompanied, very, very Greek wedding. And Tula's father, Gus, makes a speech that is warm-hearted, touching, gentle and loving. He also presents to Ian and Tula the gift of a house. Ian and Gus embrace and we know that in this story where Easter featured heavily, there has been another resurrection. A relationship between the two men that was non-existent, at odds, dead, now through the unrelenting, irresistible, unconquerable nature of love, has blossomed into enduring life. Well, the film is a romantic comedy, but it is also a commentary on the power of love and faith and new life. It is truly an Easter story. There is a phrase that we sometimes use in church. It comes from the first letter of John, chapter 4. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And if we are not careful, we can say it is rather a throwaway line with a sort of surface, well, yes, of course, response. But let us look at that thought more closely. God is love. That is what God is. Love. Love as a force. Love that is shown from one person to another. Love that is shown to a pet. Love that informs decisions that we make, the organisations we organise, the countries we make. Love that a child shows for a favourite soft toy, a teddy or a floppy rabbit that they bring to them to the communion rail. That's why I always give that toy a little blessing, because in loving that soft, squidgy, stuffed animal, our children are learning how to love, how to feel, to care beyond themselves. God is love. And those who live in love, those who inhabit, who share, who show love, live within the very heart of God. And God inhabits, dwells in, lives in the very heart of them. For the past three days, since Maundy Thursday, we have walked the way of the prophet Micah. We have considered how we might do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We have seen how justice and mercy, the consideration, the love we show to others, is rooted in the humility that we nurture in our own hearts. The humility that acknowledges that we love, we show, is but a portion of the greater love that comes from the source of all love. There is a story about a famous rabbi who lived before the time of Jesus called Hillel. He was once approached by a pagan who promised to convert to Judaism if the rabbi could teach him everything that was in the Torah whilst he stood on one leg. But Hillel called the young joker's bluff and replied, that which is hateful to you do not do to your fellow. 
that is the whole Torah. The rest is explanation. Go and learn. It's a form of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. A form of practical loving. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, Jesus was asked a not dissimilar question, also by someone who sought to catch him out. Teacher, which commandment is the greatest in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love your Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. For me, this is the Christian faith pared down to the absolute essentials. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love God and love one another. The Christian faith is as simple and as difficult as that. It is love that is the source of life, of resurrection of eternal life. Whilst all else may fail, love will endure. As St Paul says, love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. May you feel some part of the true joy of Easter. And may Christ fill your lives with his love and compassion and his grace. Alleluia. Christ is risen. May God bless you all this Easter and always. Amen. So let us now declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for our, ourselves and our neighbours and the needs of the whole world. As we celebrate that he who was dead is now alive, he who was buried is risen, we pray that your church may be remade and renewed so that those who are oppressed may be made free, those in darkness may be led into light, those in despair into new hope, and all your world may know the new life of Easter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we rejoice this day, we remember your words to the disciples, peace be with you. We pray for peace in our world 
for the ending of tyranny, inequality and injustice. May we rise above all that causes strife and conflict, cruelty and suffering. Give us a vision of ourselves and our world, made free and made whole. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Christ, as you made yourself known to Mary in the garden, the disciples in the upper room, and the travellers to Emmaus, be known among us, in our homes, in our work, and in our journeying, and in our remaining. Let us rest in your presence and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, at this time we pray for the very old, for those living with serious illness and for those who love them and struggle as they witness their loved ones' diminishing health and daily challenges. We pray to you, through Christ the Healer, for all who suffer from the coronavirus, COVID-19, in Ireland and across the world. Give wisdom to policymakers, skill to healthcare professionals and researchers, comfort to everyone in distress, and a sense of calm to us all in these days of uncertainty and distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have died in these recent days as we light a candle in our hearts to honour them and entrust them to God's mercy and loving welcome. May they fly straight home into God's embrace. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, for whom love was stronger than death. Amen. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, make clear to us each road, make safe to us each step. When we stumble, hold us. When we fall, lift us up. When we are hard-pressed, deliver us and bring us at last to your glory. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and every day. Amen. Let us go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.